Welcome to session two of Catch the Vision. In section two, we wanna ask and answer this question, who are we? You know, if you uh, go back to our train illustration and there's this luxury train and you like the train and, and you realize after session one, it's going a direction, you resonate with that vision. You, you would get excited about being a part of a catalyst in, a, in an area like the Bay that is really making a difference, that sees partnerships as a value and is really focused on discipleship. Well. All of that is great, because that's where we're going. But you know, you have to remember that a lot of people got on this train years back, right? And as a train is moving from stop to stop, city to city, it develops a certain culture, and you know, it was based on certain beliefs. And so what I wanna do in this section is to try and help you understand what are our beliefs, what are our values, and what is our culture? And by beliefs, I mean historical. What Doctrinally, what, what do we believe that the Bible actually says? Second, by values, what do we hold dear? I mean, not by what we say, but by our behavior. I mean, these are values, these matter. Uh, under pressure, we're gonna default to these values. You ought to know what those are. And then culture, a good definition of culture is simply the way a group of people goes about doing things. And here's what I want you to get. Sometimes we over-spiritualize things. People have personalities, churches have personalities. Um, you know, there can be great people, godly people, wonderful people, but sometimes their personalities are just a little bit different or the culture is something that you think, wow, I like the train, I like the direction, but you know, privately you would say, I just really can't see doing two to five to 10 years with this group. I, I mean, I think they're great people, but they're just, I don't think it would be a connect. And so what I wanna do now is just help you use this session as a filter uh, so that you can know a little bit more about our beliefs, uh, our values, and our culture. So let's start with our beliefs. Uh, you'll notice in your notes there, we believe in biblical, historic Christianity. In other words, from Jesus' words to the early apostles, to the Apostle Paul and Peter and James writing this, to the early church fathers when, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Apostles' Creed was written, or in 381 AD, the Nicene Creed, there is a historic things that we followers of Jesus, we believe these are the majors. And you'll notice what we believe about God, what we believe about the Holy Spirit, about Jesus, what we believe about salvation, what we believe about the return of Christ, uh, what we believe about the nature and character of man. There's certain things that for over 2,000 years, we as followers of Jesus in what's often called Orthodox or historic Christianity believe. We believe that the Bible is God's word. Jesus believed it from cover to cover. And so we want you to know that we believe those things, but notice at the top under it says, in, in the essentials, we have unity. In other words, these are things that we all Christians of all time have held to. Things like on that doctrinal statement, Jesus is God, that you need to have a born again experience for new life, that the Lord is in fact coming back, uh, that there is a trinity that is one essence and three persons. And you know, as you read through this, for some of you, this will be like, oh, I've got this. I understand this is where you're coming from. For some of you, you might be new and you might be thinking, well, I, I think I believe the Bible, but I've, I've never checked it out. And I want you to know as you look at some of the information there, we have a place that you can go where you can examine whether these things are so. In fact, uh, some that have been around know, I didn't grow up in a Bible-believing church. Uh, my experience with most people, just from my little world, who said they were Christians, uh, their lifestyle and some of the ways they lived and believed didn't make sense. And so I, I came to a point where I didn't know whether there was a God, and I didn't know whether Jesus was real, and I certainly didn't know if the Bible was something I could trust. And so I came as a, as a skeptic. And, and out of that journey, um, both in graduate school and then later in seminary, I realized that I can't throw my brains in the trash to be a follower of Christ. I believe God made my mind. And although we can't reason everything, I don't think there's just some big jump that, oh, someone somewhere said the Bible's true. And so over the years, I developed a series called Why I Believe. And it's why I believe in the resurrection, uh, why I believe in the Bible, uh, why I believe in Jesus as who he said he is and is the way of salvation, why I believe in the God of the Bible, uh, why I believe in life after death. 
um, why believe in creation. And it was a study and a journey that I think you'll find is very well researched in both scripture, but like the Bible, if you understood about prophecy, archeology, span the promises of God, uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, all I want you to know is if you're not sure about the Bible and what we believe, you can go on a private journey. You don't have to throw your brains in the trash and wherever you're coming from, we want you to develop convictions. We want God to speak to you. Um, I'm trusting my life. Everyone in the world is betting on something. Have you ever thought about that? Your present life, your eternity, life after death. Everyone has somewhere from someone or some places developed, uh, you probably don't call it a theology, but it's a philosophy or a theology about what's true, what's right, is there life, is there death, is there a God? If so, how can you know him? And you have developed a system of beliefs. What I would challenge you to do is really ask yourself, uh, where did I get those? Are they trustworthy? And we want you coming to Venture Christian Church not to be overwhelmed with this is what we think. We want you to go on a journey and discover those things for yourself. Now, there's certain things and essentials, unity. We all believe those. We partner with all kinds of churches, all kinds of denominations, you know, charismatic, non-charismatic, denominational, non-denominational, you know, reformed churches, dispensational churches. For a lot of you, all those words don't mean much. But what I want you to know, if people believe those essentials, we're on the same page. They're like-minded churches. But notice there's non-essentials. There's really good people. I mean, really smart people that would view things differently about maybe the role of women or maybe some of the, the sign gifts or um, maybe about exactly when and how Jesus is coming back. There's lots of different positions that are important, but they're not critical for our fellowship. And so in those secondary issues, notice we're gonna have diversity. Uh, I will just tell you, I've met people that are very, very godly, that are really, really smart. And I just don't see some of these secondary issues the way they do, but I really respect them. So we're not gonna argue, we're just going to agree to disagree because they're not foundational to doing ministry. And then finally, I love that last word, in all of our beliefs, we're gonna show charity. And this is gonna be a place that's gotta be safe, that you can think different things and you can share those and we're gonna be loving about it. But I do want you to know, these are our rock solid beliefs um, this is what God has shown us. It's the rudder of our church. And so as you evaluate and pray and think, am I gonna get on this train? And I like the vision. These people actually believe this. In fact, we're staking our life and our eternity on it. And so that's the invitation I have for you. What I've found in this, there's probably three or four areas that when people come to churches that can cause disunity, division, or some people, Sometimes you don't even know, but you have, um, out of your background, there's certain little things that like, man, this really matters to me. And if we're not on the same page here, you just can't help yourself. It would cause tension. So I'm gonna mention four things, and I'm gonna tell you that we have resources uh, that you can see there in your notes, that you can go check each one of those out. You can know what we believe, why we believe it. We hold them lovingly. And that way you can know if this is a fit for you. Remember, we're on a journey together asking, is this the right destination? And is this the right kind of people? Okay, same-sex marriage. What do you all believe about marriage? Uh, we believe that the Bible is clear that marriage is between a man and a woman. Um, we, we understand people have all kind of issues in their lives. We understand the culture is very, very different. We understand actually we live in one of the most liberal places in all of America. And so we are very loving and kind and minister to the homosexual community, but we believe that marriage is for a man and a woman. Another area would be, uh, what's the role of women in the church? And I can tell you again, we have a, you can see in your notes, you, there's a message you can listen to, there's notes you can examine. Uh, we believe that just like in the Trinity, there's absolute equality between men and women. But just like in the Trinity, there's very specific roles. The Father has a role, the Son submits to the Father, uh, the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. And so uh, there's leadership roles for women in our church everywhere. Apart from God is very clear in scripture that the elders or ruling elders, the authority of the church are men. And so uh, I can explain that to you and you can check that out. But if that's an area of concern, 
uh, that's something I encourage you just to examine. And what do we believe? Why? In fact, what you'll learn is that Jesus is the greatest women's liberator in all of history. It's, it's a fascinating study and one I think you'll really enjoy. A third area is kind of about the, the sign gifts. In other words, what do you all believe about healing or speaking in tongues or um, some of the things that maybe if you come from a more Pentecostal, Assembly of God, charismatic background? What I can tell you is we have people from all those backgrounds in our church and here at Venture Christian Church, it's not an issue. Uh, we believe that God can give any gift to anyone at any time. Uh, now, I'll tell you um, that in that is that we've seen and we practice what uh, the scripture says, we anoint people with oil. We have seen God supernaturally heal people. Uh, I think God can do whatever he wants at any time, but we have an entire series on the Holy Spirit, and it's about experiencing God's presence and his power 24-7. And the real issues are, what does it mean to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What gifts happen when? Uh, are there certain gifts that have to do with becoming more mature or less mature? We cover all those areas. And what I can tell you here is we have a spirit of freedom in our worship. We have a spirit of freedom, but we ask everyone in those backgrounds where there's a little bit differences, we don't try and get anyone on those secondary issues to believe our way or to sort of recruit them to, you need to have this experience or that experience. And I think as you look through that material, you'll see sort of a, a, a real openness and a freedom here when it comes to those. I know with many of my uh, closest charismatic pastors and brethren, what I love, what I love most is the supernatural worldview. And uh, we believe that God wants to act in the supernatural. We believe that God wants to do miracles, that he wants to do miracles in our lives, through our lives, in this church. And uh, that the greatest miracle of all is when a person comes out of darkness, receives Jesus as their savior, and is born again to new life. And as God chooses, According to his will and his graciousness, we have seen him heal people. We've prayed for other people, and I've done their funeral later. We can never tell God what to do, but we're a church that is open and longing for the power of the work of God to do all that he wants to do in us and all that he wants to do through us. Um, the final area I would say, there's a, a little information there on the church and politics. And some people will come to a church and say, if politics in any, any topic that has anything to do with politics, if it's mentioned, oh, that church is terrible. I have other people who would come to our church and say, unless you guys are telling us who to vote for and handing out things and championing things, then you're not relevant to the community. We have a very important biblical message on that. And I can tell you this, is that individual believers have a very clear role in whatever society, whether it's a democracy or uh, any kind of society, the scripture is clear about your personal responsibility. And it's also clear that the church's responsibility is to hold up Jesus. And the flag over the church isn't Republican, Democrat, Independent, or Libertarian. Is that the flag over the church is the Lord Jesus and him crucified. Our goal is to make disciples. We will equip you all and then you, each one of you, Guided by your conscience and your research, you need to vote and participate as God leads. We have a whole message on that that I think will make that clear. So, let's take a breath. That's what we believe. Historic, biblical doctrine. We do it with a sense of openness. We don't have all the answers. We can agree to disagree but we're gonna be loving in how we communicate and share differences with one another inside the church and outside the church. The second thing that lets you know whether this is the right train for you is our values. In other words, what do we hold dear? And we have a couple categories. You'll notice in your notes there that we have what we call core values, and then we have what we call aspirational values. Core values are, and these are so non-negotiable, these are us. <laughs> I mean, you wake me up three o'clock in the morning, bam, these are, you know what, never budge on these. This is about the DNA of Venture Christian Church. And uh, here, here, here's what they are. Number one, it's that we're gonna be surrendered to God. We, we believe you gotta be all in. I mean, you know the old, if you've ever watched the Texas Hold'em, you know, the card games on TV, and you know they push all the chips to the middle of the table and say, I'm all in. We believe that total surrender of your life, your heart, your future, of all that you have and all that you are to Jesus Christ is the channel 
through which God's biggest and best blessings flow. We believe it's the safest, best place in all the world is to say to a good, good God, I want you to know I'm all in. And we see when people do that, miraculous things happen in their life. Second, we believe that we're a missional community. Our focus is outward, individually, small groups, as a church. Uh, this is a church that has a tremendous history of missions around the world, local missions. Uh, for example, just last year alone, we gave over $2 million outside of our church to help people locally, globally. And, and we're going to be missionally in terms of discipleship, with kids, compassion, uh, delivering people from the sex trade, uh, homeless ministries. We really believe that when you look at the life of Jesus, his body today ought to do what his physical body did then. The sick ought to get healed. Uh, the children ought to get loved. The disenfranchised ought to someone have their arm around them. And that every people group all around this great Bay Area and all around the world, we ought to reach out and love them. And so you're going to find that over and over and over, we're going to be talking about where are we going to go? How do we get outside our box? How do we reach our community? How do we love people inside of our homes? How's that coffee shop? How does the, does the dry cleaner know the Lord yet? You know, we want to be a people that share the love of Christ by our actions and by our words. Uh, we're going to be a group that, that fixes up schools and helps the community and partners with the mayor. And uh, we, we're going to do things that we're just going to make this city a better place because we believe that salt and light and disciples always leave things better than they found them. The third core value is we're going to do life in community. I mean, it's just the idea of coming to this church and sitting somewhere and then just coming back week after week and not getting connected. That's not, that's really, really not an option here. We're going to do life in community. We're going to invite you, ask you, love you, provide ways for you getting into some kind of a small group. It'll be in, in a way that's helpful most to you. It can be men, it can be women, it can be through a ministry team. But if a, a 12 to 18 months you're around here and you're not in some kind of a community, then you are not a participating member. You can't do life alone. We need one another. And this isn't about just believing the right things and hearing someone talk and going to a service. This is about, remember, coming before God, doing life in community, and being on mission. It's we want to help one another. So those are our core values. Those are things that really, really matter to us. And uh, that kind of lets you know the kind of people that are sitting on the train in the direction that it's going. And then this, this next set is what we call aspirational values. These are ones that we've made a lot of progress on. But we know that there's a farther way that we can go. And so as you look at your notes here, notice diversity, ethnic, and generational. Uh, when, you, when you come to our services or uh, maybe you're doing something virtually online and you're doing it by Skype or Zoom or whatever, you're going to see all kind of people from all kind of backgrounds. And we currently translate uh, one of our services in Korean, uh, another uh, in Mandarin and multiple other languages. We have pockets of Brazilians and Indonesians and we partner with uh, multi-ethnic churches. So this is a part of our heart. Uh, the second is uh, healthy families. Uh, we, we really believe, especially in the Silicon Valley, wow, we really want to help healthy families. So you find classes here on families and small groups on families and special events for families and, and training and parenting and preparation before you get married. Uh, we're committed to volunteers. And what I mean by that is that the heroes in our church are not the pastors. The heroes in our church are lay people doing the ministry. We equip you to do the ministry. We long to see you fulfill God's dream in your life. And then finally, one of our aspirational uh, values here is innovation. We're going to be a church that is experiencing constant change because growing things change. We try and communicate it well. We try and make for soft landings. But uh, when you want to impact a city, when you want to make a difference, uh, Jesus said new wine requires what? New wineskins. And so uh, there's going to be, it's going to be a place of change, but it's a place of exciting change. You have to have some things that are really stable, and we're careful about that. But those are some aspirational values. And then when we go to make a decision, because you know when you have lots of people coming, there's lots of ideas, and if you want to be innovative, right? Someone says, we don't want to do this. We should start a ministry here. No, we should do this. Well, what about that? 
Well, how do you discern which things you should focus on? And uh, this kind of gets to our culture. And we use these as what I call strategic anchors or filters. And so there's something you should probably know about our, our culture, the way we go about doing things that lets you know if this is maybe the right train for you. Uh, first, we're gonna ask, is it biblically true? It might be a great ministry, great idea. Does it really align with scripture? Second, is it transformational? There's lots of activities, there's lots of ministries, there's things that have been nice or worked well in other parts of the country. That's wonderful. But is it God's will for here? Is it transformational? Are lives going to change? The third, is it scalable? I mean, we live in the Silicon Valley. And so we, we're, we're asking God to do some very big supernatural things. So when we're asking where to put time and energy and money and ministry is, can it scale? Can it develop? Can it multiply? The fourth is, is it culturally relevant? Um, you know, we're unapologetically, we realize the world that we live in, we want our music to be culturally relevant. We want our discipleship to be culturally relevant. We want who we are and what we do. We don't want to be like the world culturally, but we want to have a bridge to the world system that is biblically true and hold into tension where our methods can always change, our truth and the Bible never changes. The values, principles, truth never change. How we deliver those in different seasons to different groups, uh, we want to be open. You know, um, many, many, many years ago, people thought that radio was bad because uh, they came up with ideas that the prince and power of the air, and so ministries didn't want to use radio. And the same was true with TV, then the internet. In other words, every time there's an innovation, you need to ask, what's God doing? And are you ready to lean into innovation and guard biblical truth? So what we wanna do is we wanna take the timeless truths of the Bible, and we wanna deliver this truth through real life people in the most culturally relevant way possible without ever violating the truth. So when we begin to make big, big decisions about where we're gonna go, what we're gonna do, we ask, is it biblically true? Is it transformational? Is it scalable? Is it culturally relevant? And then because of where we live, we ask, does it leverage technology? In other words, I mean, we live in the technology capital of the world. And, and that's the people, whether it's engineers or coders or CEOs or VPs, our church is filled with people in the Silicon Valley that are shaping the world by their companies. And out of that, God did something very, very recently. He began to plant something in our heart about reaching one million people, literally discipling a million people in a 10-year span without a primary brick-and-mortar strategy. You'll hear a lot more about this in the future, but what that involves is taking the content that we have, the people that we have, the sort of uh, systems that is used in the Silicon Valley and using technology to begin to take this aircraft carrier of that God has planted here in the Silicon Valley and send it out, not just on planes, but digitally and virtually and groups multiplying all over the place in ways where people are disciples of Jesus Christ who may never ever land on the physical property that we call Venture Christian Church. How's that gonna happen, you ask? When's it gonna happen? What will be the budget? I don't know, <laughs> you know, but here's what I know. God has put the people here with the vision and the technology, and we have been working, are working, and we, we have some exciting things that are happening right in that area. So that's the culture. It's a place where there's times where, you know, that's part of the culture. Am I uptight about that I don't know? No, I can tell you startups that actually spend hundreds of millions of dollars to accomplish something that the technology to accomplish it doesn't even exist yet. And some of those are the very things that you're using every day now. That's the Silicon Valley. And God has placed us here to do things like that. So let me ask you, now you know who we are, you know what we believe, you know what our values are, and I think you're getting a drift for the culture. How does that sit with you? Is, does, do the values resonate with you? Do you, you kind of align with the culture that you think, you know what, I think I could do life with those people. And if so, let's stick around because we're gonna ask how in the world does this really happen? How do you make it happen day in and day out in the everyday life of a church?